Hi, I'm Sarah Baya and welcome to my science class. Hello and welcome to another fun and interesting lesson today. In this chapter, we will learn about some parts that help animals survive in places where they live. In today's lesson, we will be studying how body structures of animals help them adapt and survive in their particular habitat. At the end of our lesson, you are expected to infer that animals have different body structures that make them adapt to land and water, and structures that they are using in getting their food and protecting themselves from their enemies. Have you been to a zoo? A zoo is a man-made habitat for animals to live in. A habitat is a place where an organism makes it its home. Let's review your past lesson and guess the habitat of some animals in the wild. answer them all correctly, congratulations! As a reminder, humans are not the only habitats on Earth. There are so many tall, big, small, short, different types of animals. So in order to protect those animals, we need to take care of the Earth so that they don't go extinct. Save the Earth and save our animals. Let's explore the science of animal adaptation to the environment. An adaptation is a characteristic of a living thing that helps it survive in its environment. An environment includes everything, living and non-living, in the area that a plant or animal lives in. All living things have adaptations, even us humans. Adaptation is all about survival. Animals need to survive, that is why it can affect how an animal looks, adapts to changes in the environment, and its behavior and some developmental adaptations over generations to help them survive. Now, let's go on a field trip and find out more about animal adaptation by studying their structures that help them survive in their environment. Polar regions where the weather is extreme and inhospitable, which includes the North and South Poles, these regions are usually covered in snow almost the entire year. Temperatures reach as low as negative 37 degrees Celsius and the sun does not set for over 6 months and does not rise for the rest of the year. Yaks, polar bears, and wolves have dense fur that protects them from the weather and keep them warm. Their fur even covers the sole of their feet to prevent them from slipping in the ice. Grasslands are wide open spaces where the dominant vegetation are grasses. 
Animals that live in grasslands like the bisons have specialized teeth and digestive system that helps them in breaking down the tough grass. Prairie animals have strong front leg paws that allow them to burrow in the ground for safety. Cheetah and antelopes have strong legs and are known as the two of the fastest land animals. Grasslands sometimes go a long time without water, but giraffes have adapted by not drinking water for weeks at a time. They have super long necks so they can get water from the leaves they eat. Lion's fur perfectly blends into the savanna so they can sneak up to their prey easily. They sleep during the day and hunt at night. They use their long claws and sharp teeth for hunting. The desert has extreme temperature fluctuations from strong heat during the day and sub-zero temperatures at night. It has limited water bodies and the rain is scarce, but there are many animals that are well adapted to life in the desert. Meerkats have dark green around their eyes to stop glare from the sun, so they can see well even when it is really bright outside. Camels have humps at their backs that store fat for extra energy. They have broad, flat, leathery feet to protect them from the hot sand and long eyelashes that bat sand away when there's a windstorm. Other desert animals like the monitor lizards, snakes, and gila monsters have developed thick fatty coverings that help prevent water loss from their bodies. Tropical rainforests are generally hot and humid as it is located near the equator. Rainfall is plenty and lush vegetation dominates the area. Toucans have very long beaks but are lightweight. They use their strong claws to get a good grip that keeps them from falling down on trees. Howler monkeys are one of the loudest animals on earth. They live up in the rainforest canopy. They use their loud voices to communicate with other monkeys and move around quickly and wrap their tails around tree branches to keep them from falling down. Taper are large rainforest animals that live in the forest floor. They have sloped shoulders and long flexible nose that root into trees and bushes. They can also swim on shallow water using their noses for breathing. Animals that can fly and spend a lot of their time in the air are called aerial animals. They have hollow bones to make their bodies light, wings to help them fly, and a streamlined body shape to help reduce drag so while on flight. Monkeys, sloths, and koala bears are some examples of arboreal animals who live mostly on trees. They use their sharp claws to climb up and down branches and have strong muscular limbs and a tail for holding tight so they would not fall. Animals that can live on both land and water are called amphibians. They have strong back legs which help them from jumping and webbed feet to help them for swimming in the water. They also have slimy, smooth skin that helps them breathe underwater for a long time. Animals that live in water are called aquatic animals. Some mammals like the seal, whales, and penguins have thick layers of fat called blubber, covering their entire body which helps them provide heat from the cold and also helps them to float. Most aquatic animals breathe through gills and have fins or paddles that help them to swim. Stingrays have flat bodies and swim along the ocean floor. Their eyes are on top and their mouth is on the bottom. Sea urchins have spiny, spiky things coming out of their shells that completely covers their body. They have tube-like feet that sucks into things and teeth so they can break down food for eating. In order to survive, animals need food and water. They spend most of their time searching for food. 
They make use of their body parts to get and eat their food. Hummingbirds have long skinny beaks that help them drink nectar deep inside the flowers. This special adaptation plus its ability to hover over flowers make the hummingbird very specialized since it can use food source that most other birds cannot get to. It does not need to compete with other birds for food. Other birds have interesting beak adaptations that help them gather food. Pelicans have large pouch-like beaks to scoop up fish. Hawks have hook-like beaks to rip apart their prey. In all these cases, the special beaks help the animal survive. Bees and butterflies can dip into shallow nectaries of flowers using a long narrow tube-like proboscis. When a frog catches an insect, it throws its sticky tongue out of its mouth and wraps it around its prey. Octopus tentacles are strong and with rows of suckers on each side to grab and pull their food. Animals also adopt themselves in order to protect them from their enemies. Some animals develop specialized structures that help them ward off or intimidate potential predators. Let's take a look at some examples. An armadillo is a unique animal covered by armor plates and it rolls into a tight ball when it feels threatened. Porcupines are like rats but they have a really amazing way to defend themselves. They got sharp quills on their bodies that they can raise up to ward off their enemies. If an enemy gets too close, the quill gets stick straight right into their face. Clownfish have tiny round fins and can swim very quickly. They can escape from their enemies because of the layer of mucus over their scales that scares their enemies away. Some animals like wasps, squids, scorpions, and centipedes have poisonous stings, while crabs have hard shells, deers, goats, and cows have horns. Animals can also blend in with the environment so they can hide from their enemies. Camouflage is one way animals adapt to their environment. The green-eyed tree frog has textured flaps of skin that is designed to resemble the tree barks on which it lives. This helps the frog blend in and not eaten by their enemies. Sometimes having a good camouflage is not enough, so some animals resort to mimicry, where they change their physical appearance to mimic other animals. The margin wing stick insect does mimicry so well that it resembles a piece of twig or a dried up stalk. So, are you up for some challenge? Our challenge for today is to combine features of two or three different animals to create an entirely new one. Use your imaginations and create some stellar animal mashups. So, did you create a new species of animal that's well adapted to its environment? If you do, congratulations! Today, we have learned that animals have different body structures that make them adapt to land and water, and structures that they use in getting their food and protecting themselves from their enemies. So that's it for our lesson today. Don't forget to read more about our lesson in your textbook and module and answer the activities in your worksheets. Once again, I'm your teacher, Sir Abaya. Thanks for listening. See you next time. That's all for today. See you next time.